Oh, open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. You know, I was telling my son Michael that I was raised in a little town called McQuanago, Wisconsin. And um, it's between uh, Waukesha, Milwaukee, and Chicago, along the borderline of Illinois. And after I got born again, see, when I, when I was raised, I can honestly tell you, I do not think that I ever met anybody who ever told me about Jesus. I, all my neighbors, we were Catholic, Lutheran, Presbyterians. And uh, when I got out of the Navy, I came back to uh, McQuanago. And I stayed there for a little bit, and I was trying to find a home church because I knew in my heart I needed to be together with the people of God. I could not find a church where they preach Jesus Christ. So can you imagine there's whole sections of society across America that are absolutely wilderness, wilderness. I mean, just no gospel. So, well, thank God for TV then. Thank God for radio, you know, along that line. But, you know, there's a, there's a lot of teaching out there today that is really, really just completely off the wall when it comes to Christianity. But, but thank God we have some place we can come together and hear the truth. And the Bible says you will know the truth, and the truth will what? Make you free. The, the life of a believer, the life of a believer really is mysterious. It is isn't really a mysterious life. Now you say, well, how is it mysterious? How do you compare it to all these other religions? Well, all the other religions of the world, all of them, and even a lot of them that call themselves Christians, are not really, they're, 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 they're not a system of faith. It, it really isn't a system of faith. Faith in Christ, confidence in Christ, trusting in Christ, believing in Christ. Because the just shall live by faith and the just shall walk by faith. And we were talking about this last uh, Sunday in Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance. And all of Hebrews 11 is declarations of, of over 50 events of what? Supernatural. Faith always takes you into the realm of... Of the impossible. It always takes you out of the natural realm into the supernatural realm. See, the only way I can understand Christianity is by looking at the book of Acts. There is what Christianity is. You, you know, if I had never seen a duck and you try to describe to me a duck and then you showed me a picture of a duck, I could actually, by looking at a picture of a duck or watching a duck, coming to be introduced to a duck, I could tell you, well, that's not a duck, that's a chicken. Now, how many know we're not going to call a chicken a turkey or, or, a, or, or a goose a duck? Well, maybe a goose is getting pretty close to a duck. But you, if you know, how many know what a duck looks like? And if, if I brought a turkey up here, how many of you could I convince that that turkey was a duck? Any of you? No, because you know what a duck looks like. Well, the only way I could find out what true Christianity is is by looking at the book of Acts. No, the book of Acts, of the Acts of the Church, that is Christianity. But we're trying to be told that a lot of things going on today is Christianity. It's not Christianity. Christianity embraces Christ, loves Christ, follows Christ, obeys Christ, is passionate about Christ, is in love with Christ, believes Christ, trusts Christ, hopes in Christ, has confidence in Christ that he is our wisdom, our righteousness, our sanctification, our redemption. He's our all in all. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear in glory... Then, you sh then shall you also appear with him. So, in, in, and I was going over, I was just listening to First John this week, and, and over and over and over, 
John is trying to reveal to his generation what Christianity is. Christianity is victory over sin. Over and over and over. He says, if any man says that, you know, that you can sin and be right with God, he's a liar and there's no truth in him. Christ came to deliver us from sin. Give us victory over sin. Set us free from sin. What is sin? It's open rebellion to God's will, God's character, God's personality. And how do we overcome? How do we overcome this, this thing in our flesh? We overcome it by faith in Christ. How did David overcome the lion and the bear and Goliath? He didn't do it because he was a mighty warrior, though God made him into one, but it all happened by faith. By faith, David slayed Goliath. We get born again by faith. Um, Water baptism doesn't save us. We just get water baptized because God tells us to. And so water baptism is just an expression of our faith. You know? Uh, Look what it says here in 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, that means he's the anointed one, actually God in the flesh is born of God. Now, when it uses the word believeth here, it, it, it's not like, well, I, I, I believe in the Easter Bunny, I believe in Santa Claus, and I believe in, in Jesus. No, no, no. It's you know that you know that you know. There is, it, it's not Jesus plus Buddha plus Hindu plus Sun Young Moon plus, you know, plus uh, Muhammad. No, it's Jesus Christ. See, and they call us intolerant. No, we're not intolerant. It's just truth. It's just, it's this truth. It's, there is no other way to the Father but then through the blood of Christ. There is no remission of sins without the shedding of the blood of Christ. And so it says, whosoever, say whosoever. Whosoever believeth. Say, I'm a believer and not a doubter. Now, we're going to, just for a little bit this morning, I want you to see that because we all go through tests and trials of faith. As a matter of fact, Paul said, I have fought the good fight of faith. Faith to trust God, believe God, have confidence in God to the point of producing results or being doers of the word, it takes faith. Because we sure, at times, it sure don't look like God's word is real. It don't feel like God's word is real. There's no evidence that God's word is real. But we true, we, we believe no matter what. The psalmist said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. We believe. And and, and that's the foundation. I mean, no, no, that is the foundation of our existence. Trust in in Christ. Not trust in a God. Trust in Christ. We, We trust in God the Father, God the Son, the Word, and God the Holy Ghost. There's three, there's those three bear witness in heaven. Now, we know before the greater notable day, the Bible says there's going to be signs in the heavens and signs in the earth beneath blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. Uh, it's amazing if you look at history, if you go back from Genesis all the way, there was many, 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 many hundreds of years where it seemed like God just up and disappeared. And then all of a sudden, God would just step into the pages of the human race. You, you look at Noah's day. Man, it was bad. It got so bad, God said, I wish I would have never made you all. The earth was so filled with violence and immorality and perversion, all the thoughts of man, and then God spoke to a man by the name of Noah, told him to build an ark, and it was an act of faith. I mean, it was nothing but complete, absolute faith for him to build that ark. And, but I, I, I'm totally convinced he was trying to get people to come aboard the ark and to repent. He was a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says. So Noah wasn't just caught up in his own little world and it's for me, myself, and I, and Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their, their wives, and my wife. No, he, he said, y'all, y'all come in to the ark. Y- y'all acknowledge that we've been wrong and God is right, 
and come into the ark. And into the day that God shut the doors, nobody would believe. So we're in the same situation where we know that in the book of Jude, it says that they don't acknowledge that, that by the word of the Lord, the floods were retained and the floods came. And by the same word, God will consume this earth in fire. So what are we doing? We're like Noah. We're, we, 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 Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It's not just the love of God that constrains us. It's this. We know that God can't lie. We know. You, you would be amazed. You can get on the web and look at the statistics of those who call themselves Christians, the percentage that really believe the whole Bible. It's not very many. Most people who confess to know Christ and believe the Bible are very selective in what they believe. No, no, no. True Christianity says, I may not understand this. I believe it all. I believe it. I, I believe, and see, this is, even if you're not receiving divine healing, you say, I still believe in divine healing. I believe it's God's will to heal everybody. I, you know what? Most people will never be saved broad and wide. Many there be what's going there at. But it says he would have all men to repent and to acknowledge and to come to salvation. It says if we do not believe, yet God cannot deny himself. He's faithful and true. So even if I'm not apprehending all that has been promised to me, I still I choose to believe it. And I choose not to create a doctrine or a philosophy or a theology that blames God because I'm not obtaining what he has for me. How many of you got a brain? <laughs> Some of you don't. That's a miracle. But how many, how many you use your brain all the time? You use your brain all the time. Every bit of it. I don't. <laughs> how many got common sense? Some. How many you don't use it at, at times? Well, you know what? We can't blame God because we don't use our common sense. A lot of people are blaming God for dumb stuff. But it, it goes on to say, whosoever believeth, that Jesus is the Christ who is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God in what? Over and over and over, First John talks about keeping his commandments. And this is love that we keep his commandments, and the commandments are not grievous. Keeping whose commandments? What commandments of God? We're not talking about the Levit Levitical laws. Feast days, holy days, new moon days, Sabbath days, don't eat pork, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're animal sacrifices. No, we're, we're talking about this, the greatest commandment of all. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and being, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. It says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Do I love God? I'll keep his commandments. When Jesus rose from the dead, he told his disciples. This is what he told his disciples. He told his apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He told us this, go and teach all men everywhere to observe all things I have commanded you. That's what I'm supposed to be teaching. Um, and, and, and the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul, changing our mind, changing our personality, changing our attitude, changing our lifestyle, changing how we talk, how we walk, how we act, how we live, what we do, and it makes us different than the world. You know, I don't know if you know this, the one reason why the Jewish people was, are so hated around the world is because a true, a true Jewish person who embraces uh, the, the, the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all the way back to Moses. Listen, they never assimilate into society. They don't assimilate. That means they stand out like a sore thumb. Um, remember, that's what happened in the days of Esther? huh? Because the Jewish people would not assimilate. Uh, Haman hated their guts and all the people and wanted to kill them. We don't, we don't when, we get, when we begin to follow Christ, we, we stop acting like the world, talking like the world, thinking like the world, and living like the world. And I'm not saying that we wear strange color clothes or we cut our hair in a weird way. No, I'm talking about our attitude. 
We have a thankful heart. We have a praising heart. We have a worshiping heart. We acknowledge that God is the author, the creator of all existing things. We do not embrace uh, perverted lifestyles. We, we do not embrace evolution. We do not embrace science falsely so called. We do not, we, we embrace that which is holy and righteous and pure. Now, we're not condemning we're not, we're not condemning people verbally, but you know what? Our lifestyle condemns them. It convicts them. When, when, when I got born again, hey, before I got born again, my, my buddies I ran with that I did the drugs, alcohol, and all the other messed up stuff we did. When I got born again, I didn't go and just preach at them, uh, you know, trying to drive uh, 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 God down their throats, but them guys turned on me. You know Why? Because they're trying to get me smoke. I said, man, I don't need to smoke, man. Trying to get me to do drugs. I don't need to. Trying to get me to do alcohol. Trying to get me to watch the filth with them. I said, no, nah, man, I don't do that stuff no more. I said, Jesus is alive in my heart. And it wasn't, three, it wasn't four or five cuss words and then four or five praise Jesus, hallelujah kind of stuff. I, I, I was walking with God. That will bring conviction. Well, how do you walk with God? Do you do it by how you feel? No. Do you do it based upon your circumstances? No. For in other words, no matter what circumstances, someone who knows Christ finds them mess up, and they're not going to be perfect. A righteous man falls on and says, gets back up. But he, no matter what the circumstances you find yourself in, the faith that is in your heart for Christ just won't let you go all the way back to where you were used to be. Yeah. You'll find yourself tested, tempted, and tried. You'll find yourself sliding back at times. But guess what? It's like you'll wake up and go, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I can't. I'm not going to live like this. I'm not going to talk like this. I'm not going to act like this. I'm not going to be like this. I don't. Yeah. I, I mean, the most miserable people in the world are not sinners. It's believers right. yeah. who end up Going backwards. How many have ever been there? <laughs> Just makes you miserable, don't it? Unless you believe the doctrine, I'm okay, you're okay. You know, what a lie. The Bible says, listen, come on, let's not ignore. The Bible says, without holiness, no man will see God. That's what he said. How, how many think God's lying? You think God's going to change that? He ain't going to pluck that scripture out at the end of the world. And say, well, now I know y'all weren't living holy for me. I know y'all, now not, when I say holiness, I'm not talking about actually the length of your hair, the length of your shirt, or how tight of a bun up you got on your head, you know. Or if you don't have no jewelry, you know, people get, well, you know, a godly person doesn't wear jewelry. Isn't that amazing? When God had the Israelites leave Egypt, he had all the Egyptians put all their jewelry on them, <laughs> men and women, you know, because that was how they, ca they carried their bank account with them in those days, you know. That's how they carried their wealth. They didn't have debit cards. I mean, no, they didn't have debit cards. Okay, some of you learned something new today. So it says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Overcometh the world. What's overcoming the world? That doesn't mean we're out here slaying the people of the world. Talks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches. For in other words, these things are not controlling us. You can't manipulate us with this stuff when you're walking by faith. And if you're walking by your feelings and your emotions, your five senses, you're walking by the flesh, that's walking in the flesh. You know, because you're born again doesn't mean you're always walking in the Spirit because if you were always walking in the Spirit once you're born again, the Bible wouldn't tell us don't walk in the flesh. If, if a born-again believer could not walk in the flesh, the Bible would tell us, not tell us, don't walk in the flesh. You hear what I'm telling you? It's like saying, well, my car can't go over 55 and you speed past me doing 90. Well, if you went past me going 90, that means you could go over 55. 
So that we've got the flesh to contend with. So for, but how do we overcome the flesh? By faith in Christ. How does that work? It's a mystery. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory, this is the victory that overcometh the world. What is it? How do you overcome the world? Even our faith. faith. It's not your intellect. It's not your IQ. It's not your good looks. Though I acknowledge you're a whole bunch of good looking people. <laughs> how do you overcome? Not by your feelings, not by your emotions, by faith. By faith, you overcome by faith. Trust in Christ. You overcome by trust in Christ. So, you know, in the natural, how many of you have ever gone to work even though you just felt like you were pulled through a knot hole? Let me ask you something. Most people in the world will go to work no matter how they feel. Well, what, what is the power behind them going to work? Most of them is the love of money. Right? They don't want to move, move, lose a paycheck. They don't want to lose that money. They don't want to, that money, their life revolves around that money. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. For instance, money will cause people to do a lot of crazy stuff. They'll do a lot of stupid stuff for money. But for the believer, the money motivates the world. They say money makes the world go round. That ain't true. It's Christ. He upholds all things by the power of his word. But really for the life of a believer, see, when I got born again, my old buddies, they couldn't understand me. I didn't, really didn't understand myself. You know what, what kept me going? My faith in Christ. You know what kept me going all these years here? My faith in Christ. I can actually, I wish I could tell you, it was my love for my wife that kept us together for going on 40 years. It wasn't. You know what it was? It was my faith in Christ. Now abideth faith, hope, and love. What kept my marriage together was faith in Christ. Faith which worketh by love. Faith in Christ. So he, he tells us, for what is born of God, I come with the world, and this is a victory over come with the world, even our faith. Who is he? Who is he? Who is the person who's going to overcome? The person who walks by faith, lives by faith, actually talks by faith. We're having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, so they spoke. We also believe in their first speak. We speak what we no, it's true. But God's word be true, and everybody else a liar. God said. God said, by his stripes I'm healed. God said he meets my needs. God said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. God said he loves me with an everlasting love. God says if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. God said, I had a woman actually come to me just last week and sat down. And this person said they're coming back to the church here. And this person literally told me this. They said, Pastor, I've gone to church after church, and I'm drying up on the inside. They're not teaching me how to walk by faith. Huh, she saw this. Now, maybe she didn't set her clock this morning. I don't know. But she saw this. She says they're not teaching me how to live by faith. Well, if I'm not a man who walks by faith, how can I take you into that realm of faith? You see, you need to see it. You need to be desperate to live in the realm of faith because that's the only place there's victory. Victory over the flesh, victory over the devil, victory over the word, victory over demonic powers, above all, taking the shoot of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Listen, it's a shield of faith. The, 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 it, you, 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 the enemy comes, and it is written. It is written. Listen, the world don't do that. When, when, when the devil comes to those in the world, they don't go, God's word says. 
They go, oh, my back's killing me. Oh, no, what am I going to do? I ain't going to have enough money to pay this bill. Oh, no, why did she leave me? I just, oh, I hate her guts now. See, but bitterness don't rise up in our heart because faith says, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. And if you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. See, I was raised in a home of great, great hate and bitterness. Great hate and bitterness. Great hate and bitterness. My dad hated my grandma and grandpa so much it got deep into my heart. I, I remember as a little boy, my mom was in the hospital, and they had dropped me off at my grandma and grandpa's house. And uh, I gave them so much grief, they brought me back home. And I still remember to this day, I must have been six, seven years old, they dropped me off at the garbage cans at the end of our driveway. But you know, praise God, when I got born again, love exploded in my heart for my grandma and grandpa, and I would go and stay with them. And I would, I remember one time my grandma came to one of my preaching meetings in Wisconsin. And as I was preaching, my grandma began to weep. And she began to say, oh, Michael, I've never heard of nothing like this. I've never seen, no one ever told me. And I led her to Jesus, led my grandma to the Lord. But see, I, I, and I found they were such a sweet couple. But I didn't have a shield of faith to protect me against the root of bitterness that was in my dad from his dad who used to beat him and he left home at 15 years old and I left home at 15 years old. It was a generational curse of hate and bitterness that led to alcoholism and violence and wife abuse. But when I got born again, I had this shield of faith. A shield of faith to protect my mind and protect my heart and protect my attitude and to where that bitterness no longer controlled me. But I want to have that shield of faith. What do you mean the shield of faith? Based upon truth. Forgive or you will not be forgiven. That, that, just that truth alone tears the lie of once saved, always saved, right out of, from the roots. Because people say, well, why don't you get born again? You're good all the time. Well, didn't Jesus say, my father says, if you don't forgive, my father will not forgive you. So you really believe a non-forgiven person to go to heaven? No, they can't. you got to forgive. Faith says, you must forgive forgive. You know what I say? I must forgive. Now, is that based on feelings? No, you kill the skunk and the stink hangs around for a while, but the skunk is dead. So you, just, you can't tell me. Listen, many, many, many Christians I know through the years have been overwhelmed with the spirit of hate and bitterness. Just bitter people. You can still run into people who used to go to this church that hates Pastor Mike's guts. Now, maybe they have a good reason, but how many know we don't have a good reason to hate anybody? It says, how can you say you love God and hate your brother? Well, they did me wrong. Well, you know what? You could be absolutely right. But have you ever done wrong? And did God forgive you? So, Notice, let's finish up there, and I'm going to jump over here just for a moment before we close this morning. Look what it says. It says, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, you have to take that all in, in its context. That's why we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That you believe that Jesus is all he said he is, all that he said, and all that he did. For in other words... You, you don't, like, you know Mike Yeager, well, you, 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 don't, you don't go, yeah, I agree with the little pinky on Mike Yeager. No, I'm all of me. You, you get all of me or nothing, you might say, right? When my wife got married, whether she knew it or not, better or worse, right? She got all of me, not just a part of me. Every bit of me. Listen, I believe Christ is all that he says he is. Look there now in Romans chapter 8. Go to Romans, and y'all know, you're all very familiar with Romans chapter 8. Where Paul is speaking to the church 
in Rome that is being extremely persecuted. It got so bad where they finally started arresting him and feeding him to the lions, putting him in the, uh, uh, the arena and letting the uh, gladiators slay him. I mean, it got really bad. You think you got it bad? You ain't got it bad compared to what those people did. And, and they knew, they, they knew the problems of walking with Christ in that generation. Look there in verse 35 of Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? Now that's quite a list, isn't it? <laughs> Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So these things separate us from the... For other words, to, because, because you experience these terrible things, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, Pearl, sword. Does that, see, listen to what he's saying here. You know, God don't love me. I'm naked. I'm destitute. I'm persecuted. I'm hated. I'm despised. God doesn't love me. No, God does love you. We don't base our circumstances, we don't base God's love for us on whether or not everything's going hunkadory. Well, if you truly loved me. No, you're walking by feelings. See, I found out something. You know, one key to really having a good marriage, never focus on whether or not you're loved. Focus on loving your mate. If you focus on being loved, I guarantee the enemy is going to have a heyday. You know what I mean? Sometimes your mate will treat you like a doormat. Sometimes your tr mate will treat you like you're not even there. Sometimes your mate treat you like she don't, or he don't care if you come or go or not. But, but that's not your focus. Your focus is to be like Jesus. To be like God who loved us when we were yet sinners. Right? Well, I love him when he stops being a sinner. Well, that's not what... God did. Yeah, but I'm not God. Yeah, but God lives in you. You have overcome them, little children, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. How? By faith, Christ dwells in this body. It's all by faith. Now, Lord, you told me to love. Love never fails. I will love. I will love them, Lord. I will forgive them. I will bless those that curse me and do good. Remember uh, uh, the Beatitudes? Bless those who curse you. Do good to them that do you evil. That's, that's what's different about Christianity than, than all other religions. It's God alive in us. God manifested in us. God manifested in us. I tell you, when the Yupik Indians were trying to kill me, they couldn't hardly believe that they couldn't get. All, all that time I was with the Yupikins in Alaska, and they're making me eat duck heads and duck guts and duck feet, and they're, they're trying to kill me in the, in, 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 the, in the steam house in the McKay. And I remember one time we were going to go hunting, and we got into what we call a skiff for the kicker. It's a boat with a motor behind, and we're going up this river, and we're going past all these grizzly bears, and we get up to a set of waterfalls, and they try to get up around it, and we hit the prop on a stone, and it broke the stone. Now, we've been going, it took us all day to, so now, I mean, we're talking way out in the boondies, people. To get to that village, I had to literally take a pontoon boat, I mean, a, pontoon, a plane with pontoons and land on the river, right? So now I'm a white guy, and these Yupik Indians hate my guts. I'm a 19-year-old kid. I'm preaching Jesus. I'm singing Jesus. I'm talking Jesus. I'm excited about Jesus. They're mocking me in their language. They're laughing at me. They're literally physically pushing me. They're doing all kinds of stuff to get me mad, but Jesus is alive in my heart. And so we hit, we hit the, a rock, and, and, and the prop broke. So now we're having to float down this river. Real slow. The sun is setting. There's an old cabin. So we stopped at the old cabin, stayed there the night. The next morning we get up. We're going by. And I looked over and I said, it had to be God. I seen like a bunch of old motor parts. I told them, hey, guys. I said, we'll find a prop over there. I, just, I didn't even put this in a book. It was the Holy Spirit. They said, what? 
and they mock me. There ain't going to be no prop in there. I said, there's a prop in there, guys, that will fit our, our motor. Now, how many know that the possibility of a prop fitting our motor in a pile of old junky uh, 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 engine parts is almost impossible? We get over there. They're kind of laughing at me. I jump out of the boat. I get the pushing around, and I, there's a prop. I pull I said, here we go. They said, oh, that'll never fit. Guess what? It fit. Right? So we're going now. We got it. Now it's missing one blade, but it's still like four props on four blades on. So we're headed down the river, and we get stuck on a sand dune. So guess who they get to do all the dirty work? Get out. And they, call, they got a dirty name for a white person. Get out. They're treating me like dirt, man. But you know what? I'm not bitter. I'm not mad. They finally, I get out. I push them off. And guess what? They rubbed up the engine and left me behind. Now, I'll be honest. I didn't yell or scream. But it, I was so mad at that time. I'm so glad they, they even had my 270 rifle with them. If I would have had my 270, I might have put a couple of holes in the boat. I mean, it, it, was, it was the trying of my faith, man. These guys had been pushing me and pushing me and trying to make me break. You know, that's what the world's going to do. But faith up to this time had kept me. In that moment of weakness, I was so glad I didn't have my rifle with me. Well, they went down the river. And so I'm thinking, I've got 15, 20 miles where I'm going to have to walk along this rough river. And there's grizzly bears everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, if I get back to the village alive, it'll be you. So, but guess what? My heart, because of the word that I had hit in my heart, switched right away to sweet, kind. I can honestly tell you, all that time I was with those people, I never once cussed at them, yelled at them, or spoke evil about them. What was it? It was faith. It was faith. I, I see, I read the Bible that says he'll never leave me nor forsake me. I read the Bible where he said he loves me with an everlasting love. I, I read my Bible where my name was written down in heaven and therefore rejoice. And so when I'm going through all this persecution, there is nothing. Now you understand, before I got born again, I was one ugly, nasty, mean young man. You wouldn't want me dating your daughter. But now I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new because the word of God has been hid in my heart. I didn't have a lot of it, but I had enough of it. So finally, you know, I saw him go down the river. I'm just walking along the shore trying to, you know, and, and it's rough shores. It's not, it's not like a smooth sandy beach. I mean, big rocks and boulders and grizzly trail. And I'm just saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And finally, I heard the engine, and they turned around and came back and got me. Never apologized. Let me get back in. Never said, oh, Mike. Not, and, and up to the day I left that, them people, them young men, they never once apologized to me. But one of those young men got born again went to Bible college, and started in an Assembly of God church in that town that is still there to this day. Give the Lord a hand clap. How did you overcome? By faith. You overcome by faith. In this generation, in this time and age, we've got to really get a hold of true faith in God. I just don't feel good, Pastor Mike. I know what you mean. There's a lot of times I don't feel good. It don't look good, Pastor Mike. I know it don't look good. A lot of times it don't look good. Well, you know, I'm, we're here by faith, people. We're, 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 we're not here based on a budget. <laughs> we're not based on sponsorship or by people's financial support. We're here by faith. We're, here by, we, we, we're not here based on feelings. We're based here on, we're saying, God, you have a purpose for us. You have a mission for us. And right now we're talking around the world. What a day we live in. So let's finish up. What should we say then to these things? If God be for us, verse 31, who can be against us? That's faith. Say, God is for me. So who can be against me? Now, now you know, I saw uh, um, somebody post a picture of a big lion on Facebook. And the caption is, when you're a lion, you don't care what the sheep think. 
What does that mean? It means he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He lives inside of me. And sometimes sheep stink. Sometimes sheep are wrong. But when the lion of the tribe of Judah lives in you, you don't worry what the world says or what the world thinks or what the world does. It's going to be okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo. Go ahead, Nebuchadnezzar. It don't matter to us. Our God is able, hey, if we get burned up, we get burned up. And if we don't, we don't. Daniel, you can't bow down and worship God anymore. Not for the next so many days. Daniel just keeps it up. He don't go to the king and complain. He don't whine and cry and suck his thumb and fill his diaper. He just keeps doing what's right. Tell somebody, keep doing what's right. It don't matter what people think. People aren't your source. People will help you, but a lot of times people will hurt you. It's just the way it is. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things in verse 32? See, I backed up. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him? In other words, don't be moved by your circumstance. God is for you. If God, in verse 31, if God be for you, who can be against you? And in verse 36, we jump down there where it's talking about all these problems as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. For in other words, that's how we're going to feel. That's your feelings. That's not reality. Say, that's my feelings. Feelings. Right? Feelings. Feelings are so fickle. Feelings. No, it, you're going to feel like God has forsaken you. You're going to feel like God doesn't love you. You're going to feel like you don't have a tomorrow. You're going to feel like nothing is going to work out. You're going to feel many times like you're an utter absolute failure. But how many know we don't live by feelings? See, he's talking to people who are going through major problems. Major, major. But listen what he says in, in a bold word, verse 37. Nay, nay, in all these things, in, in them, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So many, many Christians have died early deaths persecution, burned at the stake, fed the lions, slayed. But, but you know what? It's okay. Because when you step out of this realm, many, many believers have died from sickness and disease. That doesn't keep them out of heaven. Many, many. Listen, God forbid, but if the day ever comes, you've, you read in the paper, Pastor Mike passed away and blah, 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 and he blah, 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 and he was trusting God, but he died. Don't weep for me, because I'll be in heaven. How many of us have loved ones on the other side? You know what? A lot of them didn't die. Leaning on a staff, blessing people. They, they died in the bed of, a, of sickness. But you know what? It's okay. They made it. They made it. They didn't sell their soul for a bowl of porridge. I, I, I knew Pam's parents. Oh, what godly parents. I, I knew them uh, uh, for over 30-some years, and they were godly people. And they went home to be with the Lord. But you know what? They're with Jesus. They're with Jesus. Isn't that really what matters? The world may say we're defeated. The world may say we're failures. They say Jesus was. But how many know he was more than a conqueror? He overcame the world, the flesh, and the devil. He overcame the grave, rose again on the third day. So, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. How? Through Jesus that loves us. For I am, say, I am persuaded. Listen to what Paul said. You know, they cut his head off. Paul died in prison, but he was more than a conqueror. For I am persuaded. Say, I've got to be persuaded. See, I, I, I am persuaded by God's grace until the day I die, I'll never let go of Jesus Christ. I don't care.
care what happened. I'm not letting go of Jesus. Well, what if this place never fills up? Has nothing to do with my faith. You know, the amount of people come here has nothing to do with this. Has nothing. This building has nothing to do with my faith. Me and Jesus. Say me and Jesus. So it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, some people try to use that as an illustration and say, oh, there's Calvinism. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. The only thing it didn't mention there was you. Nothing in this world. But I can choose to not walk by faith. I can choose to turn my back on God. You say, well, truly born again, spirit-filled men don't do that. Oh, yes, they do. Listen, I had a real good friend of mine. I'll close with this story. Me, um, back in 19, oh, 1980, uh, I was doing a lot of traveling and preaching, and I was pastoring in Three Springs. And uh, there was this, this guy who was kind of over an Italian gang up in Huntington. His name was Sparky. I won't mention his last name because he he could still repent but but Sparky came home one day and he had been drinking and his his wife Julie was uh they lived in an old trailer house and she was watching uh Pat Robertson on TV he came in he was so infuriated he got so mad at her he began to physically beat her physically beat her she ran down the long hallway of their old mobile home and I'd been in his mobile home many times back then after this happened. And as he went back to beat her up some more, God hit him. He said, Brother Mike, he said it drove me to my knees. God was nowhere in my heart and my mind and my attitude. I mean, it was supernatural. He said, I had to turn around. I had to crawl back. I got in front, and as I got in front of the TV set, Pat Robertson was praying the prayer of salvation. He said, Mike, I cried out. I prayed to prayer. He got gloriously born again. Gloriously born again. And he got filled with the Holy Ghost. I ran into Sparky at some meeting somewhere. He was a, way younger in faith than I was. I, I, I was five years older in the faith. You know, I thought, man, I'm mature. He's just a kid. So I began to try, and he was about my age, so I began to try to help disciple Sparky. And... Uh, they had a lot of issues in their marriage, and I began to try to encourage, my wife and I would encourage them, hey, you, you need to stop treating your, because he kept on treating her wrong, because he wasn't, he wasn't filling his heart with the word, but could he move in the gifts? This guy, actually, he was doing a Bible study, and he was at this woman's house, and somehow the boiling hot water, she was making a pot of, uh, uh, of hot chocolate, somehow it got spilled, poured on her hand, and her hand was right away blistered up. He ran over there, grabbed her hand in front of everybody, prayed. There was people there, and God formed brand new skin on the, on, on the lady's hand. Another day, he began attending a Nazarene church, and as he was, as they were going into the church, it was a busy highway, they heard screeching tires, and here this little boy that came to that church got hit and ran over. Sparky told me, he said, Brother Mike, the baby's, the kid's head began to swell up. He said, I, I couldn't help it. I ran out there, grabbed up the little kid, and in front of everybody, the little kid's head became normal, and he was completely healed. But the problem is, pride began to really move into Sparky. Well, my wife and I went off to Germany. We came back, and now he's built a brand-new church, three, four hundred people, but pride has exploded, and his wife, she can't communicate with him no more, so she began to write letters to a guy in prison. Uh, yeah, she's ministering to a guy in prison. And Kathy and I, we sat down and we said, listen, he wouldn't listen to me. He was born again, moved in God the whole nine yards. Next thing you know, that guy gets out of prison. She leaves her husband, runs off with this guy. Next thing you know, they're accusing him of having an affair with the pianoist. He says, well, they've accused me, I might as well. You see how the devil works? Next thing we hear, 
he's run off with the pianist. Then she runs off with another guy. And then she ends up living with, he ends up living with another woman, living in sin, gone back to alcohol. He's like a top-notch fisherman on Racetown Lake. God laid him on my heart, so I'd call him up. He wanted to talk to me, so I thought, okay, i got to hire the guy. So I hired the guy to take me fishing. Didn't catch a fish that day, didn't care. Just sat in the boat with him and began to try to share Jesus, began to share Jesus. Didn't seem like it worked any, did any good. This was back in about 19... This was back in about 1990. Then his two boys that I was close to, they turned their backs on daddy. And the last time I heard, he's completely gone off into alcohol. His boys won't even communicate with him. And he's gone. And here is a man. Now I'm not saying he can't come back. Just lift up Sparky. Ask God to bring him back. Because Paul said, I myself could become a castaway. This guy had walked with God. He knew God, but he wasn't renewing his heart with the truth. The enemy found a way and brought death and destruction. How many know fornicators and adulterers and alcoholics cannot go to heaven? You got to repent. So when it says, nothing shall separate me, the only thing that's not listed there is you, say me. Poke yourself in the chest, me. You're the one who determines your destiny. Your wife doesn't, your husband doesn't, your children doesn't, your mom and dad don't. You determine. But we have victory in Jesus. But you've got to walk humbly before the Lord. You can't get cocky. You can't think you're okay, you're all right. You've got to just work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Because it is God who worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Father, I thank you now that we've got victory in Jesus. Father, help us not to treat our salvation like it's just, it's just something we, we, we don't have to be concerned about. But Lord, help us not to tread upon the precious blood of Jesus. And help us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And to keep on trusting, keep on believing, keep on following, and keep on believing in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. You, you can't.